Hello everyone and welcome to the live webinar for Lean Startup Fundamentals. Who do we have on the line so far? I know we're a couple minutes early here. I just want to make sure that we're all going to get squared away so we can get started right on time. We can get some, some people on here first. And if you have any questions that you know for sure or burning questions that you want to ask me, you can use your Q&A box and start sending them over my way. I will select them as the webinar goes along. So I am here for you. Um, so start sending those my way. You, you should have a Q&A box over to your left-hand side. You'll see a Q&A box and enable that. And then you can start sending things my way. Be with you in a second, guys. Hello everyone, we're going to wait just a couple more minutes to get some more people on the line. I know people are barely getting back from work right now. So just hang in tight for a couple more minutes and then we'll get started.
Hello everyone, alrighty, let's get started here. How are you all doing in the chat box? Let me know where you guys are from. I know I have some listeners from, from Mexico. I think we had some people sign up from Tunisia. Where is everybody from? Let me know. Ah, I see somebody from Mexico City. Awesome, welcome. We have others from Chihuahua, Mexico, welcome. Some people from San Francisco, of course. That's where I am physically at the moment. Welcome. Awesome, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I promise you this will be well worth your time. So let's get started. I'm going to switch on over to the presentation because I want you guys to be able to follow along as we go there. So give me one sec here while we do that, and then we're golden. Welcome again. All right, let's get this rolling here. All right, so you guys all joined in for The Lean Life. What is The Lean Life and who am I? You can start following me at, at Startup, Startup Life Tips, and then we'll get rolling here. So who am I? And how did I learn what I'm going to teach you today? Who cares and what matters and why should you guys be listening to me today? So my name is Martha Edith Hernandez. I am the CEO of Startup Life Coach. I started, I've been consulting for the last three to four years and I learned about the Lean Startup methodology directly from Steve Blink. So for the last two, two to three years, I worked under a program with the National Science Foundation Innovation Corp. And in that program, I got to learn and see and observe over 300 teams go through an intensive two-month program with Steve Blank and some other instructors. And in this program, what we got to see was the progress of amazing engineers and scientists take their idea that was sometimes not even a prototype, and then take that to the market. So they would actually get to a place where they realized whether or not the market was going to buy it or not. And then they would realize if they wanted to be entrepreneurs or not. So that's my background there. I've also done work with Intel, SanDisk, Citrix Startup Accelerator, the AT&T Foundry. So I've had a lot of experience with international companies and enterprises, and it's been a blast. I've worked with 18 different countries. One time I ran an accelerator virtually for 14 different countries in eight different time zones at once. It was kind of crazy, but totally worth it. It was super cool. And I'm glad I got that experience to do that. So now let's get to the nitty gritty. What you guys actually came here for. Let's get some information now that we got the boring part out of the way. All right, so what is Lean Startup? Lean Startup is the fundamental of what Steve Blank teaches. So for those of you who don't know Steve Blank, Steve Blank is the, the guru, one of the gurus in Silicon Valley. He is a serial entrepreneur, a lot of very successful ventures, and a lot of ventures that didn't go well. So he realized that he wanted to tell people what does work. And in his work he realized he started looking back and observing and see which companies actually did a good job what were the success factors and he realized that success factors were actually talking to customers believe it or not a lot of people go out into the market just creating a product without ever talking to the person that they think is ever going to buy it which is a huge mistake so that is the the basic fundamental of the Lean Startup methodology, which is talk to your customers before you code anything and as you're coding. So instead of thinking as you build it, they will come, you actually build it as they're coming to you. So you actually take in your customer's input so, bef so that you know that you're building something they actually want. So, but first, before we get into all of the nitty gritty on the Lean Startup, I want to talk to you about something else that is absolutely critical, and that is mindset. And what do I mean by that? Well, in the entrepreneurial world, I encounter a lot of people that say they want to be entrepreneurs, they want to be tech entrepreneurs, and a lot of them think they already have a startup. 
most of the time it's only a hobby. Sorry to tell you. Because if it's not making any money yet, it's not really a startup. It's a hobby, especially if you've been doing it for the last five years and you have no income from it. It's a hobby. So what's the difference between an entrepreneurial mindset and a non-entrepreneurial mindset? The entrepreneurial mindset knows that everything is an experiment and you learn from it. So there is this woman, her name is Carol Dweck. I recommend you guys follow her. She's absolutely amazing. And I'll send you a link right now to her, her video. Um, Carol Dweck talks about mindset. So there's a difference. There are two types of mindset. There is a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. So you can probably guess which one you need to be an entrepreneur. So in order to survive and thrive as an entrepreneur, you need to have the growth mindset, which basically boils down to you're willing to experiment and you're willing to see failure of events as events as themselves, as opposed to you turning into a failure. So those are the people that are very successful because they take risks and then they move forward and realize, you know what, that, was, that didn't work out as well as I thought, but moving on, I'll try something else. And you really need to have sort of that, that thick skin as an entrepreneur to survive or else you will get eaten alive. And that's just the basics on that. We can touch more on, on that later. So let's go over the big mistakes that I see in the market. So here um, I have a picture of something. <laughs> Can you guys see what's on my screen right now and see the big picture with the big mistakes? Can you guys see that? Let me know in the group chat box. All righty. Oh, we have some people from Portland joining us. Welcome. And Medellin, Colombia. Colombianos, welcome. Let's see. Can you all see the picture that I have going on here and see the amazing engineering feat? Let me know what you guys see on the screen. I want to make sure you guys can actually see this or else it's going to be kind of hard to talk to you guys here. All right. Yes. Thanks, Paul. All right. So if you were to describe what is happening on the screen in this moment, um, when one word, how would you describe this image? Tell me, how would you describe this image in one word? Yeah, this is a pretty great pick, right? <laughs> well, I have a favorite word for this. Yes, I'm seeing mistakes, no communication. Yes, all great ways of describing this. I like to describe this as arrogance. This is the epitome of arrogance because as you can see, you have people on either side of this bridge that obviously didn't talk to each other and it wasn't for lack of planning. This is your ego getting in the way, ladies and gentlemen. Ego and only ego because there is such a thing as lack of communication, but this goes beyond that. This is assuming that they knew what they were doing and obviously they didn't plan correctly for it. So there is a huge difference between not knowing something and looking at how you would want to go about it and creating a blueprint and another thing to just go about it without taking anyone's opinion into consideration. And I see this all the time with tech entrepreneurs. So please, when you're going about everything that you're doing with your startup, especially in the beginning, remember this image because I see this constantly. And you might say, oh, well, of course, this is super obvious. Well, I see all of these obvious things in the market with, with software and other products that may not be as embarrassing as this one because this was very public. But there are other people that all, also make these kinds of mistakes. So just remember that as you're, as you're going through. Let me go on to the next step here. So uh, one of the, the 
for one of the biggest mistakes you can make as an entrepreneur is building a product based on assumptions. This is huge, you guys. I see this constantly. What do I mean by building a product based on assumptions? This means that you have a need for something and you go out and create a whole team. You find a tech founder or you code it and you spend months working on it because you see it as a major issue for you and you've already spent months if not years coding something and then you go out and try to sell it. That is a huge mistake. You are not taking people's opinion into consideration. You haven't talked to anyone in the market. You don't know what their issues are and it might be a huge issue for you and I'm not saying you don't matter, <laughs> but you know who matters more? The people who are supposed to pay for your product because if you have no customers then you have no startup. You will not exist if you get no customers, plain and simple, then you then you only have a hobby. So that is the first biggest mistake that I see. Um, so please keep that in mind as we're moving forward. The next big mistake I see is scaling too fast. What do I mean by that? So let me give you guys an example. So just so you guys know, I make the best chocolate chip, chocolate chip cookies on the planet. Yes, this is true. It has been verified, okay? And by verified, I mean that I think they are the best cookies on the planet. And my little brother thinks they're the best cookies on the planet. So I, um, as of last week, set up shop in downtown San Francisco. I got a location there and I'm going to be opening up in a couple of months. So I'm really excited to be opening up in that location because we get a lot of foot traffic. And obviously this is a good idea, right? So for those of you who are on the line right now, let me know if, if I can send you some of these cookies because they really, they really are the best. Um, and it, it's a pretty good location, so obviously this is a good idea. <laughs> I see a lot of you laughing already. Yes, this is a bad idea. Thank you for not letting me do this. Why do I say this? And why do I say this with such conviction? So many people that I run into are constantly telling me, hey, you know what? I have this great product, so I'm going to build out a team. They go out and get five, ten people on board without having a product in place yet. And they, they go out and, and get, you know, workspace and hire and sweat equity all of their all of these people and then nothing ever happens because they're scaling way too fast and when you're not ready to scale like that cookie example like obviously one of the first things that you would want to do is go out and sell those cookies kind of like the girl scouts do on the corner street somewhere take them to a picnic see if people actually like them see if people want to start ordering them that is what we call an mvp the minimum viable product is what is the minimum amount of work that you can do so that you can prove that the market actually wants what you have, as opposed to creating a giant, enormous industry or program around what you think you should have without having any proof behind it. So when you're thinking about scaling, especially when you're first starting off, think about, think about it this way. What is the proof that you have? What is the evidence that you have that the market wants what you have? And it has to be backed up with data. So I brought some friends with me who um, travel with me around the world that will help you see what I mean.
I developed a new formula which allowed me to get every known kind of berry into one flavour of jelly. Awesome. Okay, you guys, pop quiz. What happened in that video? What did the minions do wrong? Pop it in the chat section. And I'm getting some notes here saying that, let's see, that the window says standby. Alrighty. So while you guys send me your answers, I'm going to try to figure out what's going on with this window over here. All right. Let's see what's happening. Sorry guys, looks like a lot of the people that signed up on Eventbrite, which was over a hundred people are not being able to access this right now. Sorry about that. Okay. This is not working okay so let's get back all right yeah saying means create an entire factor without testing it yes uh so big 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 issue right so this is what I, I see constantly and one of the biggest things that guru says at the end if you if you were able to hear that is that he says just because everybody hates it doesn't mean it's not good and I hear this constantly with entrepreneurs and it's usually heard in the following sense where they say, well, you know, I talked to that VC and that VC is stupid. He just didn't get it. And then I see them next week and they talk to another VC and that VC just didn't get it because that VC was stupid. And you know, you start to see a pattern and you realize, okay, maybe it's not the VCs you're talking to. Maybe it's you and how you're pitching it and the product that you have and showing that you have no validation in the market so far. So, you know, be, be aware of doing what the minions did in real life because I see this constantly. It's not just in the cartoons, unfortunately. All righty. So let's see. Another one of the mistakes I see is death by demo. What do I mean by this? The death by demo happens constantly. Have you ever seen someone come up to you and trying to show you their app and you ask them what they do and they're like, oh yeah, this is what I do. And they just shove their phone in your face because they're trying to show you their application. That's horrible. That's exactly what you're not supposed to be doing. It is absolutely horrific to, sh to go straight into showing someone what you do. What you need to do is tell them, talk to them. If you can't explain it to them in, within the sentence or two, you're doing it wrong. Don't, don't go straight into a demo mode because everyone will fall asleep and they will cut you out. <laughs> it, is, it is not a good idea to go straight into demo mode. So don't do that. Another huge mistake that I see is people say, I need investors. You do and you don't, you guys. The needing investors part 
is once you've already gotten some traction, you've gotten some validation, but in the beginning, you don't need investors. You don't even really need that much money. You can do so many things for free. One of the things that you can do is go out and get customer interviews. People, you don't pay people for these, okay? And what's the difference between an interview and a survey? An interview, you go in and talking to the customer and you wanna know what their issues are. What do they care about in life? And you can ask them about something in general, a little more specific, right? But you wanna know what their issues are, what keeps them up at night? Because honestly, they're gonna give you the actual solution to their problem. They're, they're going to tell you all the issues that they have and then you get to save, save the day as opposed to you telling them, hey, do you want this product? And then they, they'll say yes, no, maybe so. Very likely they'll just say no because they don't know what the heck you're talking about. So you don't really need investors in the beginning. And I, hear, I see so many people who for two or three years are fundraising and don't even build out an MVP. Don't even build out a simple Google spreadsheet to see if anybody would want what they have. I'll give you a perfect example. So does anybody know the Zipcar story? So the founder of Zipcar, you know how she started off? So the founder of Zipcar started off by saying, you know what, we live, I think she was in New York at the time. We live in a super packed city. People need a car constantly. And I'm going to see if people are actually willing to, to pay for this or do people actually need this. So she sent out a Google spreadsheet, I think it was a Excel doc at the time, to her friends so that people can rotate her car. So because she trusted them, she would leave the keys in the back porch. They And the friends would pick up the car, drop it off, put gas in it, and bring it back to her whenever she needed it. So she started realizing that a lot more people needed it than just her friends. And that's when she realized, hey, you know what? There's a potential market here. So she started charging those people. And sure enough, eventually got to the point where the car was so busy, she couldn't even use it. So of course, that's when she needed to switch over to her own new model and then realized, okay, this is a potential business model. So that's an example of an MVP. Sending out an Excel spreadsheet and asking your friends to sign up for something doesn't cost you a thing, but that way you actually see if that's something that people want and need. Does that make sense? Alrighty, let's see. So now we went over all the things that don't work, right? So what are the success factors? Let's go through those. So there are several success factors that I see and I've seen across the board with over 300 teams. Not everybody makes it, but there are a few that do, and I'll show you why. The biggest thing that leads to startup success is listening to your customers, okay? And this is absolutely critical, you guys. If you think that you, I, if you're just going to go out there and say, okay, I built my product now, now I'm ready to sell it. You have gone about it quite backwards, my friends. You need to go and talk to your customers first. And I know I'm drilling this into you guys, but it's absolutely critical. What we do, what we did in the NSF science foundation, we literally spent two months. All we did every week was send out the teams to do customer interviews and then come back. And every week we would ask, we would ask them, okay, what, who did you talk to? What did you learn? Who did you talk to? What did you learn? It was insane, but it worked out very, very well. And it was fantastic, you guys. And in those two months, you realize one of two things. I don't want to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> two, the market doesn't want what I have, but the market told me what they do want. And that's where the magic happens, you guys. The magic happens when the market tells you what they really do want. And then we do something that's called a pivot. So the, a pivot happens when you realize that the market doesn't want exactly what you were trying to provide, but you switch over to something that you realize now the market does want and they're willing to pay for it. So that's exactly what you want to be going on. There's no point in following you know, a straight lane if you know you're headed off a cliff. Change lanes if you know that's going to get you to that goal. So a pivot is not a bad thing. A lot of people have the stigma around a pivot. But a pivot is a very powerful thing to do, and it's a very strategic business decision. So now let's talk about the value proposition. What is a value proposition? A value proposition is a benefit to your customer, a.k.a. what do they care about? What are they going to get out of it? So a lot of tech 
founders make the mistake of saying that their value proposition is, is a specific feature on their app or their phone or something like that. Uh, that's not right, you guys. That is, is really just, if you're talking about a dashboard or you're talking about a new click, it, it's that's just a feature. And nobody really cares about those. People care about how it's going to make their life better. Okay. So value proposition is either a gain creator or a pain reducer. Think of it as a vitamin or a supplement versus like an Advil or a Tylenol. Okay. One of them reduces the pain. Another one makes your life better. So that's the idea behind that. So here's an example that I like to give, and it's particularly in the healthcare industry. And it's just it's, it's hypothetical. I'm not a medical professional, so don't hold this against me, okay? But this is the example. So the example is, if I were to come to you and tell you, I just created a brand new pill, and this little pill, what it does is it creates 100,000 new white blood cells in a day. And you might tell me, okay, cool, good for you. So... And I would tell you, how can you not care about this? This is amazing. This is huge. This is like mind boggling. And you might still look at me like, okay, who cares? I don't care what you just Martha said, Martha. I don't understand anything you're saying. So what if I came to you and I told you, you know what, Bob? I just cured cancer. Doesn't the conversation change a little bit? So now here's the powerful thing. I just told you the same thing. It was the same thing. One gave you the example of a feature. The other one gave you, gave you the example of the benefit. And universal terms, most human beings discuss the world in benefits. Okay? This is how we see the world. Nobody wants the details of the features. And so many tech founders get so caught up in the features. So I give you this example so you can see and start forming in your brain. How would you discuss certain things in your company to your customers? And another one of the biggest success factors is to have passion. Without passion, nobody will fund you. So when you are ready to get into the funding stage, what you really need to do is, is have the traction. And then when you start getting ready to talk to angel investors and venture capitalists, they're going to fund you, not necessarily your product. They might think your product is a cool idea and they might be interested in it, but they might think it's going to be an, a flop and fund you anyway because they want to see what you come up with next. So who you see here on the screen is my little brother. His name is Angel. And ironically enough, he's making a snow angel. This picture was taken a few years ago. He's my little buddy and uh, my little guru. So I go to him <laughs> to get some advice because he's just so much smarter than, than me. Um, a few years ago, we had this really interesting situation happen where I went to go visit the family. We don't live in the same state. And I asked Angel, I said, hey, Angel, you want to go ice skating? And he was like, yes, oh, my God, Nina. He calls me Nina. He's like, oh, my God, Nina, yes, oh, my God, I love ice skating. I want to go ice skating. I love it so much. Please, please, please go ice skating. And I said, okay, awesome. So I was like, done. So I get him in the car. I start buckling up. You know, he's in his car seat because he was only three or four at the time. And I'm putting him in his car seat. And I realize, okay, well, he looks at me and he tells me, Nina. And I said, yes. It's like, what is ice skating? <laughs> and I started laughing because he was just so excited without realizing anything about what he was going to go do. So I realized, you know, sometimes we need to live with the enthusiasm of a four-year-old where we're going to just go straight at it without having a real plan in place. And it's just so important to be able to do that with, with your startup. And if you're not passionate about it, do something else. Don't waste your time or the rest of the world's time. If, you, if you're doing it just for the money, you're doing it for the wrong reasons because trust me, the money is not going to come that easily. And you will quit so much easier. You will give up because you don't have a strong enough vision or purpose for your life. What you want to do is sign, is be available for that purpose. And trust me, the money will follow. You need to follow your passion.
Now I want to pause here real quick before I move on to the next segment because I want to see what kind of questions you guys have for what from what we just went through and uh, see if we can do some quick Q&A right now before we go into our next section. Let's see. Okay, we have some, some more people joining us. Welcome. Yes, it's definitely a huge issue when you're building a product before if knowing anyone is going to, to like it. That, that is definitely a major problem. Anybody else have any questions that they want to ask right now? When to know how to pivot? That is a good question. So what happens is once you start going through your interviews with your customers, and you have a specific product or idea in place and they start telling you what they think works or what doesn't work and you can start sort of having them experiment and what's cool about this is that you can just bring screenshots of what you plan to do you don't even have to code anything which is it saves you a lot of money first of all a lot of time you and your coders right because coding hiring a good coder is really expensive so when you bring in screenshots with your customers what you want to show them is your idea of where you would want to go with either your product or your software. And they will tell you what they like or don't like about that particular product and software. And once you don't want to change anything with just getting one person on board, okay? You want to hear it from at least 10 to 15 people. And after you have those 10 or 15 people on board, what you want to do is then you decide, okay, should we pivot? And is it towards something that you want to do? Because sometimes the market will tell you something that was completely out of the scope of something you wanted to work on. And then you decide, you know what, I don't want to do that anymore after all. Let me do something else. So that's when you pivot. Okay, so don't do, and the rule of thumb that Steve Blank uses is you want to do at least 100 customer interviews. Why? Okay, you don't really get really good at them until you do at least 30, first of all. And then second, once you get the hang of it, you're going to hear a lot of conflicting information. <laughs> and you need to follow the data that feels right to you. Okay, so whatever feels right to you and, feel, and actually fits in with the market, you want to find out what they're willing to pay for and if it's something that you care about. That's, that's the most important thing to know if you should pivot and when you should pivot. Great question. Thank you. Anything else out there? Uh, someone's asking me what is an MVP because I discussed it earlier. So MVP, uh, I guess in the sports world, is most valuable player, but not in this world. In the tech world, MVP means most, most, <laughs> minimum viable product, meaning what is the minimum you can do to prove that someone is interested in your product and potentially willing to pay for it, okay? So that is the Excel example that I gave you with Zipcar. And also, one of the things you can prove to show interest is a Facebook page, a video. This is where Kickstarter comes in handy. A lot of the companies that have gotten funded um, from VCs have been, because they launched a Kickstarter campaign first, okay? So they had actually been told by VCs and angel investors, no, but once they launched a Kickstarter campaign and started getting a lot of traction on there and getting people to prepay for the product, then things started to shift. That's when the investors realized, oh, these guys mean business. And that's when people started to get jumping on board. So it is a very important thing to start off minimally where, where you're not doing any major costs involved and you're just running an experiment to see how it all goes. So that is an MVP. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so Steve Blank teaches at Stanford and UC Berkeley now, um, and he does consulting all over the world. And uh, someone's asking me about the business model canvas. Yes, so the business model canvas is kind of like 
what's the best way to put it? It is a project roadmap, okay? So it's, you've got a whole bunch of squares and boxes on that thing. And um, you, can, you can look up the book uh, Business Model Generation by Osterwalder and I think Bob Dorf. Um, they created this project roadmap. So instead of going out and writing a huge business plan that doesn't even, it's not going to work when you guys are first starting off. Sorry, guys. Like writing a business plan is, you know, don't ever try to send me one when you're first starting off because I'm just going to laugh and throw it away. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but a business model canvas is a way for you to keep track of all your moving pieces, right? So you're going to talk about your customer segments. You're going to talk about which, well, actually one really important point to talk about your customer segments, okay? Make sure you write this down. So when you're talking about your customer segments and your customers, one key thing that people do, and this is a huge mistake that people do when they're first starting off, is putting in chunks, like general chunks. You're like, oh, well, school, di school districts are my customers. Uh, government agencies are my customers. Uh, that's way too general, you guys. Um, so the way I like to look at it is think of your customer segment as an actual human being. Like who, what would be their title on LinkedIn? Okay. So say you're an ed tech company and you need to talk to the superintendent of a specific district. Okay. Then your customer segment would be the superintendents of school districts in California, let's say, for example. Okay, that's just an example. Um, why do you want to break it down that way? You want to break it down that way because you want to be talking to only the decision makers. Sometimes you want to be talking to the influencers because they will obviously influence the decision maker, but you can't put things down in general. So if you put something down in general, like a government agency or enterprises, you know, those, if you're talking about enterprises, and government agencies and school districts, then you're actually kind of talking to buildings, right? So the way I, I see it is if they can't talk back to you, then they're not really a customer. <laughs> so that's a good way of sort of remembering to filter out the specific title of the person that you're looking for. These are all great questions, you guys. Awesome. Any more you want to send my way before we move over to the next segment? Okay, guys. Cool. All righty. We're on good track. So I'm going to get back into the presentation here to show you guys what I really wanted to show you for today. So, I want you guys, if you will, to please envision your life in five years, okay? Sort of sit there for a second and feel into that. What does your life look like in five years? And have you fulfilled your current goals, or are you still thinking and talking about it? How does that feel? Have you reached your goals or just thinking and talking about it? And how has that felt in the past? Because I'm sure there are a lot of things in your life right now that you've been thinking or talking about for years. And we all do that. All right. I have some more questions for you. What is it costing you to not take action right now? And are you ready to get serious about your startup? And is your startup really a startup? Or would you like to, to have it be a hobby for the next 10 years? Are you ready to invest in getting the help you deserve? Because you know you deserve this, you guys. You all do. Today, I want to introduce you to Tech Talk to Exec Talk Startup Bootcamp. So why am I starting this? I'm starting the Tech Talk to Exec Talk startup bootcamp because I realize a lot of people have an issue with translating their technical talk to actual universal terms and applying that with customer discovery. So because I've been doing this for so many years now, I realize it, it comes so natural to me that as a coach, I get to do this all the time, but I really only get to work with the people who, who can afford to hire me on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And that can be pretty expensive sometimes. So I wanted to create something that was 
open to more people where they can work together and collaborate and learn from each other as, as part of a cohort. So I have created a program where it's five weeks of intense personalized coaching. What does that mean? You're not going to listen to any pre-recorded videos. These are all intense personalized coaching sessions with me and my co-coach, Emna Gariani, who has tons of experience with this being a coach as well and advisor. So you get to have two of two of the best coaches in Silicon Valley who have international experience coach you personally and tailor everything to your needs as opposed to just logging into an, another site and watching some videos that have nothing to do with you. So I usually charge about $300 for one hour of my coaching for intro clients. And that's, that's actually a pretty low rate right now. Some, of, some people pay a lot more uh, but that's the minimum rate that I'm that's going right now. So if you were to count all the five weeks of coaching plus the guest speakers that are going to be part of part of our program, that would be over four grand, right? So I could easily charge you four grand for this stuff. But for today, we're not going to charge you the forty five hundred. It's not even going to be less than half of that with a two grand. For the next twenty four hours only, I have a two for one deal going on. For $4.97. What does that mean? It's essentially 50% off, right? So this means it's only $248.50 for you. That's less than one hour of my coaching time. Like this is crazy ridiculous, you guys. Uh, my accountants aren't too happy that I'm doing this, but you know what? I'm opening it up because I see people really need this help. And when you work together as part of a cohort, people learn so much more, and especially because it's not a competition everyone's in their own field and you work out things that you would have never done on your own. So I'm creating this cohort where you can come in every, every week. You don't go anywhere. It's all virtual. You work together every week. We're going to be coaching you, giving you a lecture similar to what we went through today, but just very, a lot more specific in one specific topic. And then we'll go into the round of you will pitch every single week, week, Tell us who you talked to and what you learned, and then we can coach you as to how to move forward from there. So it is five weeks of intense customer discovery, plus you will have an amazing pitch at the end. And if you're good, I'll introduce you to investors. <laughs> so here's a pricing for the next 24 hours. I only have the uh, 497 for the two for one deals. That is gonna disappear uh, midnight on March 2nd. That is not gonna be available anymore. Um, I want to make it available to you guys as soon as you get it, okay, as soon as possible. So one individual ticket uh, after that is going to be $4.97. And I also want to make it available for teams, okay, so team entry discount. That'll be $8.97 up to four people. This is a huge discount, you guys. And the reason I do this is because that way you can, you know, split it up however you want within a team. But the most important part is that you get to participate as a team. And you don't have to be legally set up as a startup yet. You can just have a group of people get together, split the cost, and say, let's do this together, and let's learn from each other. And because I know sometimes uh, startup funds can be tight, I'm doing a payment plan. So if you want to set up a payment plan, we can do three, three payments, three monthly payments of 297. And I'm doing this, again, because I want to make it accessible to everyone who wants to do this. And you guys, you know, if you can't, if you don't want to be scrappy enough to come up with at least these minimal costs, which they are minimal, they're already, as you see, hugely discounted, then imagine how it's going to be trying to come up with the money with, to go talk to investors and ask them for millions of dollars. Okay. So think, think of it in, in that mindset. All right, you guys. So I want to make sure I answer your questions before we head out here. Um, so send me over your questions regarding the program. What do you think? What would you like to see? What would you like to see in the program? Uh, is this of any interest to you? Is this anyone that, do you know anyone that would like to do something like this? Cause that you really don't want to miss out on the 24 hour opportunity. It's going to, it's going to get more expensive as we go along. So please, um, let me know if you have any questions about the program and anything else you'd like to learn about this or just anything that we covered today. <laughs> Where did I find the minion videos? 
Oh, thank goodness for YouTube. <laughs> the minion videos are very, very helpful. I use these in all my presentations around the world, and they're just they're they're amazing because it doesn't matter what language I'm speaking in. A lot of my presentations are in Spanish. Um, it's universal, right? The minions don't speak any language, <laughs> so they come in handy. Yes, asking me more details about the um, the group coaching. So how this happens is classes would are going to start on April sixth, and the classes. After April 6th will be every single Wednesday at 6 from 6 30 p.m. to 8 30 roughly depending on how long it takes for everyone to pitch in the lecture plus we're gonna have special guest speakers everyone these are all gonna be surprise guest speakers we have some people that are pitch coaches that will be coming on board and others that are investors and sometimes I'm gonna let investors come in and sneak into your presentations without you even realizing it because you want they want to be able to see you ahead of time so um, it's going to be five sessions from there, and then we'll have a virtual graduation where I will send you a certificate and say that you went through my boot camp. And um, by the end of the boot camp, you'll have an official pitch for your company if you decide to move forward with it. Because remember, you might decide, I don't want to do this after all. Um, second, you'll have an MVP because we would have worked on that in those five weeks. Um, and you're going to have a blueprint for a Kickstarter campaign if that's what you decide to do if your, your stuff is in product in the hardware side, okay? And even on the software side, we'll help you figure out the validation, whether it be through social media or any other means. So you get a pretty full package, and essentially what I'm offering you guys today is a two-month intense program uh, for the price of one session with me which is pretty awesome. <laughs> but of course, I get to say that. So um, yeah, so those are the details on the program. Um, I see a lot of people saying that they're going to email me directly. Awesome. So um, you guys all have my email either through Eventbrite or through Google+. Plus. You guys are free to send me more of your questions. I'll be answering a lot more of these questions as we move along as, and as a cohort fills up. So I have a very limited amount of seats. I can only coach up to 10 to 15 at a time, depending on my the time that my co-coach has, uh, Emna. So we don't have that many seats available. So don't let this opportunity pass you by because this is personal coaching, you guys. It is not going to be uh, a recorded video. So this is going to be personalized to you. And this is way over $5,000 value that I want to bring to you so you can have access to it. People have been asking me to do this, something like this for years now. And I hadn't done it because it just, honestly, it's a lot more work for me, but it's just so much fun. And I love working with you guys. So I, I hope you really take advantage of this opportunity. And again, if you have any more questions, feel free to email me, tweet me, send me a message on Facebook or post something on Startup Life Coach on Facebook, and I'll be happy to get back to you there. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. Have an amazing evening, and we will talk soon.